If you spend any time on YouTube, you may see sponsored ads on a lot of people's channels. People are YouTube celebrities. They're vloggers. They keep what, uh, channels of various different sorts for their livelihood. There's a great, there's more content that gets put on YouTube every day than you could watch in an entire year. It's amazing. But lately, and by lately, I mean maybe the last year or so, it hasn't died down at all. Everybody's trying to sell you a VPN. The internet is coming for you. Everything out there is terrifying, but a VPN will protect you from hackers and space aliens and zombies and mind control. And a VPN is what you need to stop all of the spying governments and organizations. And wow, like I've seen some people lay it on pretty thick and people are spending money when they don't need to. So. Let's talk about what a VPN is, what a VPN does for your security, and if you really need one or not. So first off, there's a lot of legitimate reasons to have a VPN. Some of the things that they bring up are legitimate concerns that you should have about your security. What websites you visit, your ISP knows about. Maybe you don't like that. Now. They talk about encryption and military grade and this and that. And if you go to websites that are HTTPS, the S already stands for secure. You see that little lock there? You're already going into an encrypted website. Now it's true that your internet service provider can see your DNS requests. So they know what website you're going to. That might bother you. They also sell and market that data. Not all of them, but the fact that some of them do, you should assume that eventually all of them will do. It's just how that is, unfortunately. So if you don't want your ISP to know what websites you go to, a VPN is a viable tactic. VPNs are also viable tactics to circumvent censorship, government censorship. There's all sorts of reasons why people in other countries besides America need to be using VPNs because the government is trying to censor whatever websites, whatever communication methods, whether it's Twitter in the Middle East or uh, YouTube or all sorts of other at Facebook. There are websites that are legitimately censored via the government having control over that internet section of the internet. So a VPN is great to circumvent that. Some people use that same tactic to watch TV shows from other countries, right? You can go to the, you can sign up to the BBC. They can see that your IP address is not in the UK. They don't show you the same content. You go to log into your VPN. You say you're in the UK. Poof. Now you can see that content. VPNs also slow your traffic down. You're adding more hops. The internet used to be called the World Wide web a long time ago. Kind of what the WWW stands for. And that, web terminology is important. There's no straight line in a spider's web. There's lots of zigs and zags and connections, right? To go from Austin to New York, typically I got to go from Austin to Dallas. And then from Dallas, I hit a backbone. I go Northeast across country. Just from here to Google, there's nine hops, meaning I'm talking to nine other devices, routers, uh, servers, something else in the way between here and there. Now, when I had a VPN, I had twice that many, sometimes more, right? I'm literally going across the pond. The VPN creates the last hop, the IP address that, vi that other websites or service providers, meaning they're offering services, whether it's a website, whether it's a streaming service, whatever it is, uh, an app on your phone, uh, they see that last IP address. But now you've added a lot more hops, connections along the path so you've got all these connections to go from point A to point B, and then you've got all these connections to go from point A to another point, and then eventually back to over here. So you can slow down your connection considerably using a VPN for everything. What are some of the things that a VPN does not really protect you from? A VPN is traffic going out. Typically that traffic is not seen by people. Uh, most people don't have access to those routers. Those are ISP level equipment, high level networking equipment. You are protected from local hackers, 
So let's say you're in a Starbucks or in a public internet at all, you should be using a VPN to protect yourself because those requests might be visible. Some of those requests might be in plain text, meaning they're not encrypted. And that's something you do want to have a VPN for. A VPN is not going to protect you from hackers on the internet. A VPN is not going to isolate you more than most standard networks already do. If you're at your house, the VPN is used to simply change the endpoint location of your connection. It's going to create some lag. It's going to create some additional functionality and you're going to gain a little bit of encryption and a little bit of functionality, but it's not a giant panacea. This is not the end all be all for your privacy and your security. Should you have one if you're out and about? Sure. Should have one if people, you don't want people to know what websites you're going to. Absolutely. Now let's talk about VPN companies. If your, if the product is free, the service is free, you're the product. And VPN companies all the time say that they do not keep logs. Well, let me tell you, a lot of VPNs have been caught doing exactly that, saying that they don't track or keep logs on everything, and then suddenly revealing that they track and kept logs of everything. Can you imagine the liability of running a service of not knowing who logged in or who logged out or where they went or what they did? And then the federal authorities come demanding that very same information and say, hey, if you don't provide us with this information, we're going to sue you and shut you down. Uh, probably those logs then come out of hiding and they hand them over. So understand that a VPN has its place and maybe it's a service that you already get. Now, you can pay. 10, 20, $30 for a VPN, and you're trusting somebody else to set that connection up for you, or you can roll your own. Now, what do I mean by that? A lot of firewalls and routers have VPN functionality built in. Again, you're only changing the last hop. So if you want to be look like somebody else's last hop, meaning another country, you're going to need to buy a service. Now, is that a prepaid service and a pre-set up service? You can set up your own VPN. When I, as a network defender and doing particular blue team activities, meaning I'm acting in the behalf of my customers and I'm isolating network traffic, I block VPN services. There's no reason for any of the employees at any of my companies to be connecting to the work network with a public paid VPN. That's not a thing. You shouldn't look like you're coming from Germany. You shouldn't look like you're coming from South Africa. You shouldn't look like you're coming from Japan. So I just block them all. And there are identification services out there that tell me what VP are VPNs and what aren't VPNs because they have the same exit nodes. It's repeatable. Lots of websites, in fact, will block VPN traffic. You can't comment. You can't subscribe. You can't do all sorts of things via a VPN because people take a VPN as an anonymous filter, they think that they are not in any way, shape or form identifiable. And I want to punch a hole in that too. The EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Uh, let me make sure I'm get that, get that right. Yes, the EFF, the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Fund, found the Electronic Frontier Foundation is an international nonprofit for digital rights, leading digital privacy, and they are a fantastic organization. Recently, uh, and by recently, I mean the last couple of years, they've revealed that with current internet marketing tactics and what we're currently doing, how familiar a device might be to a website. You could log onto a VPN. They could still know it's exactly you, whether it's browser type, 
patch level of that browser, the geolocation you're coming from, the type of device, the screen size. When you start to filter these things down, you bring practically a digital fingerprint to you and your device. When you think about how many different kinds of phone types, how many different kinds of browsers, how many different kinds of locations, it's not hard for somebody to start triangulating where you are and what you're doing. So if you, suddenly, if you log on to the coffee shop at Monday at 2 p.m. every day, uh, and suddenly you're logging on to the coffee shop at Monday at 2 p.m., but now you're using a VPN, and you're browsing your websites, and you're doing your thing, they're going to be like, all right, so at 2 to 3 p.m., this IP address is now no longer connecting, but this IP address is connecting. It's the same screen size. It's the same patch level. It's the same browser. They're probably the same person. And that data gets aggregated between multiple different locations. This is part of the, 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 the privacy concerns that some people have. That'll be a different conversation. We're focusing on VPNs and understanding that on how your device is fingerprinted for marketing, for cookies, right? Cookies bypass your VPN. Absolutely. Oh, hey, I went to eBay. I logged in. I have a cookie here. Now I log in with a VPN. Well, the cookie's still there. So when I go to eBay and eBay says, hey, do you have a cookie? Your computer goes, yeah, here's my cookie. The VPN's not protecting you from that. So then eBay now immediately knows, hey, they're using a VPN. And this is the IP address that they're coming from that VPN. Therefore, they have a subscription to that VPN service. Then eBay tracks that data. Not because of any nefarious reason. It's because of marketing. It's because of services. It's because of geolocation. It's because of wanting to offer the best product for you. Understanding why people aggregate your digital data is purely for monetary reasons. So it's important to understand what the VPN protects from you, protects you from, which is it does not protect you from hackers. It does not protect you from, from evil people doing shady things on the internet. Uh, and if you put your data in a website and that website gets hacked, the VPN didn't protect you. It's, it's their job to protect that data that you give them. So the VPN is not going to protect you from that. VPN does allow you to obscure your data locally. If you're in a, uh, co-working space, you should absolutely use, be using VPN. If you're in a space where your, your internet connection has multiple other people that might be on it in a, uh, coffee shop, a uh, hotel, these are great reasons that you should have a VPN on your cell phone, on your laptop, but a VPN is not a catch all and all solution to create anonymity or protect you completely from the evils of the internet that might or might not exist. So please don't get fluffed up by the amount of rhetoric that you see in these YouTube videos, encouraging you to buy VPN subscriptions. They need to sponsor their channel and I don't admonish them for that. And there are some great VPN options out there. I'm not going to ask you to like, and I'm not going to ask you to subscribe, and I'm not going to put a link in this video on what kind of VPN service you should use, uh, because there's lots of them. I have lots of different VPNs uh, that I have, and I prioritize the usage of them based on how many servers they have. Uh, can I choose the city that I want to be in? Can I choose the country I want to be in? Uh, and what is the breadth? of the IP addresses that they have in their pool that it looks like I'm coming from, because then there's less likely I'm going to get blocked or less likely I'm going to get filtered. But even then there's already lists for that. So anyway, there's my uh, rant on VPNs on YouTube channels. Please, if you're buying a VPN, understand why you're buying it and why to protect yourself. Thanks a lot. I hope you have a great day.